Get it, Mike Sempervivi here with you for the next hour talking about professional wrestling, which is something we do every single day here on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Tune in, iHeart, American Forces Radio, sportsbyline.com, over-the-air affiliates like KMAV, 99 KMSR, and the Mightier 1090. Podcast replays or maybe your video streaming on Twitch or YouTube, however you're joining me today. I'd just like to say thank you. Hopefully wherever you are, it's sunny outside. If not, I hope it's sunny inside your mind. Sometimes it's sunny outside and it's sunny inside your mind. But on the inside of your intestines, well, there's a churning going on. And apparently, much like the Mauna Loa volcano in Hawaii, Brian Alvarez right now in Hawaii has fallen ill. It's the second Wednesday in a row that he is not here. Is that a trend? I don't know. He believes that he will be back in action tonight on Wrestling Observer Radio. If he's not, I don't know what happens in that case. Garrett Gonzalez, I'm sure we'll have to step up. Will Brian be there or not? I don't know. You got to become a subscriber to WrestlingObserver.com and follow along and you'll know what happens. I'll give everybody his, his Twitter feed soon. Maybe you can check him out that way. But joining us today... Filthy Tom Lawler, because you need a man to step in in times like this, and there's no one manlier, with the exception of Don Fry, than Filthy Tom Lawler. And we got a lot to get into. AEW Dynamite is tonight. Not from the box center, from the uh, BOK center. The BOK center? I like the BOK center. The Bank of Oklahoma City center. That's where that's going to be from. We had NXT last night. We have Seven Bucks Productions making a movie about Ric Flair, possibly, maybe. And we have a deal for the CW and NWA that I thought we knew about months ago. Get in all that stuff and more. And we'll get it started when we get back. Wrestling Observer Live. He's got Brian Alvarez. He whips him into the corner hard. Adam Firestorm following up, catches a boot to the face. Brian, Al- Brian Alvarez with another hard shot to the head. One, two. This is the most aggressive I've seen Brian Alvarez today here in Portland Wrestling. Now he's got his knee across the throat. He's joking him, LC. Well, it's like this week Alvarez has something to prove, brother. Something to prove to his sweet little lady over there. Of course, Adam Firestorm with a big win over Black Dragon last week. Looking for another one here. There's a sunset flip. Is he going to go down? Yes, he is. Over he goes. One, two, three. It is all over. Adam Firestorm with the victory over beautiful Brian Alvarez here in Portland Wrestling. Now out Brian Alvarez firing away with a boot. Action continues after the bell. Goes for the back body drop. No! Face first plant by Adam Firestorm. Your winner once, looks like he'll be your winner twice. Action continues. There's a whip into the far corner. Adam Firestorm follows with a spinning kick. LC, I think Brian Alvarez has bit off more than he could chew tonight. Miss Rent to own really disgusted over in the corner. Adam Firestorm not done. There's a lion sold on top. He hooks him again. One, two. Two and a half. I thought we had a three count earlier in this match, LC. I was wrong. I'm I can't sorry. believe it. I thought you thought Wild was just adding a little salt to the wound. I thought Alvarez was out of her head and a two-time loser, brother. Well, Mark Watson's hand must have stopped just short of the three count. And these eyes of mine need glasses because I thought I saw a three count. Brian Alvarez going up top. Oh, we'll forget about your cataracts, brother. Up and up he goes. Nobody but- home. Adam Firestorm back in control, playing a bit of possum. He's climbing up top as Rento and Otto really upset. There he goes. Swap oh, and that one yet. There's a hook to leg. One, two, three. Now it's all over. A two-time loser. And does the LC have to look after Miss Rento and Otto tonight, baby? There's Adam Firestorm, your winner in this match. Once, twice, three times, it didn't matter. Brian Alvarez not up to a Miss Rento and Otto. Absolutely disgusted with it. Mark Watson explaining to him it was a three count this time. No hook to leg. Fair and square, Adam Firestorm. Your winner here on Portland Wrestling. Fans will be right back 
with a, after a message from our sponsors. Back on the show, Mike Sempervivi and filthy Tom Lawler here with you, Wrestling Observer Live. You know we do this show right here for an hour at a time every single day, but if you want us 24-7, you can try to find us on Twitter slash X. I am at Sempervivi. Filthy is at Filthy Tom Lawler. For the continued adventures of Brian Alvarez, at Brian Alvarez. If you want to know what's going on in the world of professional wrestling, at W-O-N-F-4-W, and the broadcaster is at Sports Byline USA. Jim Valley's at Jim Valley. He's here with you on Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific. And Andrew Zarian is here with you on Sundays at Andrew Zarian, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. I'd also love for you to give the wrestling news a shot as a part of your day. I won't give you the long plug. I'll just tell you to head on over to the wrestlingnews.com and at Wrestling News AV on Facebook and Twitter. Find it wherever you find your favorite podcast. Filthy. Do you believe at all that Brian is really sick as he sits there in Hawaii right now? And, you know, he kept during the breaks of the show yesterday, he kept looking back behind him at the uh, the, the window or the sliding door that was right behind him. He kept looking out there as if he was truly missing something, and he was. He was missing Hawaii. Do you believe that he's actually sick today? I think that son of the beach is trying to pull a fast one on us. And if he's not, I hope he feels better imminently. Were you a big fan of that show, Son of the Beach? Because I was. And this this is a 90s throwback for people from back in the day. But uh, I, w- I, was a, I was a proponent of that show. The Howard Stern produced Son of a Beach. Mike, I have the perfect segue for you. Oh, yeah. Huh. Because... Speaking of deplorable things mm-hmm. that include Howard Stern, making the news today was one interview with Howard Stern by none other than the man that's probably going to hope we can't see him at all. But he's in the eye of wrestling fans right now, and that's John Cena. You, you'd think knowing that you're going to be asked about something like this. I mean, I know he's got the Argyle movie out, but that's been out for a while now, right? I don't know what it was, because I haven't heard the show yet, that uh, what the reasoning was that John Cena was on Howard Stern today. But, you know, he's been on Howard Stern a lot. And what's been terrible, and we'll get to what he said on the show today, but people are pointing out that one of the times he was on Howard Stern, he was talking about Canyon after Canyon had went on Howard Stern and talked about his uh, life in WWE and how he was treated and how he was scripted after Vince McMahon found out that he was talking about coming out of the closet and the situation with The Undertaker where they had a closet in the middle of the ring that he came out and sang Boy George to before The Undertaker pretty much murdered this man with chair shots, including one to the head that was uh, disgusting by, by, by no matter how you cut it, just a terrible headshot. And John Cena came on not long after that and said, ah, Canyon's lying. He was never that good to begin with. And he was just complaining. He came out afterwards and, you know, there people are bringing this up now. Now, why are they doing that? Well, Canyon committed suicide at the age of 40, you know, a New York guy. And Ashley Massaro committed suicide at the age of 39. And she had her claims, you know, kind of, you know, they're out there right now. And, and obviously News Nation, we talked about it yesterday. People looking into her claims about being sexually assaulted while on a WWE tour. But 
John Cena appeared on Howard Stern today, and once again, while not saying anything about Ashley Massaro or or anything specifically, at least from what's up on the webpage right now over at WrestlingObserver.com, this was posted up by Ian Carey not long ago, John Cena opening up about his relationship with Vince McMahon. He says, quote, I can say this, I'm a big advocate of love and friendship and honesty and communication, but in the same breath, I'm also a big advocate of accountability. I think you explained it well, Howard. If someone's behavior lies so far outside your value system that the balance shifts of like, I can't operate in a world where this works, then that's the end result of being accountable. Stern then asked Cena about how he plans to handle the situation as it relates to Vince McMahon and their friendship and relationship, and Cena answered, Right now, what I'm going to do is love the person. I love. Be their friend. And by that, it means, hey, I love you. You have a hill to climb. There's the saying of, you don't know who your friends are until the S hits the fan or your back's against the wall. That doesn't make any of what's going on any easier to swallow, but just telling somebody like, hey, I love you. Man, this is going to be a hill to climb. We're going to see what happens, and that's that. It sounds so cliche, but it has to be one day at a time. But at the same token, I've openly said I love the guy. I have a great relationship with the guy. So that's that. <sighs> Did he really have to go on Howard Stern and, and really take questions about Vince McMahon and if you are going to take questions about Vince McMahon that's the best that you can come up with for the allegations and the situation that's been put upon Vince McMahon with all of the things that we now know about Vince McMahon after all of the NDAs settling with Rita Chatterton who for years said that he raped her is this really, you know, I guess everybody's got their view and they're entitled to, to go out and, and come out and say it but I don't know. Did this do John Cena, uh, the man, or you know, the public figure and entertainer, a any like? Did did it help him at all here? Did it help Vince McMahon and how it, what his image is? Word life. I think John Cena would have been better off having the trademark ghost write a statement for him on Howard Stern than what he said. Because even if we look at it from the standpoint of John Cena, John Cena, I'm sure feels indebted to Vince McMahon. How could he not? He's been the face of a company. Probably his dream was given to him because of the business acumen and the business dealings of Vince McMahon. So I'm sure he feels indebted to him. However, Vince McMahon has put out a statement maintaining his innocence in the face of these claims. So you know, perhaps you can give John Cena the benefit of the doubt and say he's basing his feelings about Vince on the fact that he believes Vince to be innocent when it comes to this situation. But in the face of everything, social media, society, what's right and wrong on this planet, I think John Cena should have you know, thought about his choice of words a little bit better. Much like, actually, another top WWE superstar did, because Randy Orton was talked about, or asked about this very subject in a few interviews with Sports Illustrated, the New York Post, and I think he handled it a little bit better. I believe he did as well. Orton said, quote, I've got to say this, I wouldn't be where I am without Vince McMahon taking a chance on me a handful of times. I would not be where I am today without Vince McMahon. But F, I'm reading this S, what you've seen in red, I've seen in red. And as far as commenting on it, it effing hurts my heart. It hurts my heart. Randy Orton, Brian Danielson, Kevin Owens, there have been a lot of people who have said, you know, over years, you know, uh, people that a lot of people who don't like Vince and have never liked WWE, it always kills them to hear people that they like say respectful things about Vince McMahon or say father figure type things when it comes to Vince McMahon. But there were obviously two distinct sides to this man that, you know, at, at his core, I mean, as we're finding out is is pretty evil. 
uh, is pretty evil when you stack up everything that he's been accused of from over the years and and everything that we're we're finding out but this obviously is going to be a story that continues to play itself out and i guess as time goes on everybody's going to be asked about this you know working in the business certainly working for wwe at some point or another but there's got to be a better way to do it than the way john cena did at least in my opinion we'll be much like this story live when I first started training um I think it's a lot more common here in the UK to start so young whenever I talk to Americans they're always a bit shocked by it but most (laughs) of the people that wrestle in the UK have been doing it since they were very young um but yeah I started um I started in a little town called Gloucester which is where my parents lived um and then I found my school in Cardiff where I live now in Wales um called New Wave Wrestling and I kind of like grew into myself there um but obviously it's a very little country so we have to do a lot of kind of if i could get big here i can move across and i can get big somewhere else and um it just kind of snowballed very quickly um into obviously nxt uk and then here like i feel like it's all happens really fast and i have to kind of stop myself and be grateful and take it all in sometimes so i um I actually got into wrestling quite late, I guess, as a kid. I think I was only maybe 14 when I first started watching it. Um, So the turnaround between me watching it and deciding I wanted to do it was pretty small. Um, But my older brother was, like, obsessed with wrestling, and he's 10 years older than me, and he'd always kind of stay up and watch the pay-per-views. And I remember one day I was just off work, uh, off school, sorry, um, sick, and I was in the living room just sleeping. And he came down and he was like, oh, can I watch the wrestling? Because obviously it's on at like 3 a.m. here in the UK. Um, So he came down and asked to watch it. And I was like, yeah, sure, I don't care. And I think it was like an elimination chamber. um, But I remember just seeing it and then being glued. And from that day, I literally stayed up with him every Monday night before school on the Tuesday and watched it with him. Um, And then I don't know, that very quickly became me just Googling wrestling school. and I literally went to the first one that came up. There happened to be one about 10 minutes from my house, which was very lucky. Um, but yeah, I just kind of, it was one of those things that it's such a strange thing to go and do that I didn't really feel like I could pre- prepare too much for it. Um, the only thing I really knew what to do was to go to the gym. So that's how I ended up being really strong <laughs> because I was like, well, wrestlers are strong. So that's just what I did first. Um, and then, yeah, I just kind of turned up and obviously being so young, it was quite intimidating, but it was very, it was quickly alleviated by the fact that there were so many more young people there than old people. Like, I guess there was just an influx of people of sort of my generation that kind of realized, oh, we can just start, we can just do this. And even if you don't do shows for a few years, at least you're getting your feet in there, you know? Um, so yeah, it's a pretty, um, pretty weird place to grow up, I guess, to kind of become an adult around wrestling is always interesting. But um, it's always been very good to me, and I've never had any bad times growing up for it. the show mike semper vv filthy tom lawler here with you it's a filthy wednesday on the program brian alvarez indisposed right now in hawaii hopefully he's feeling better hopefully he'll be back with dave Meltzer tonight for wrestling observer radio after aew dynamite is all wrapped up and over with if not i'm sure garrett gonzalez will step in and then we will hope that brian is okay for the Brian and Vinny show, the next one of those that takes place so we can hear him talk all about NXT and his love of the acting of Lyra Valkyria and Tatum Paxley. Filthy, if we have time, we're going to get to that show later on, but there's there's still a lot to get into today. Uh, there's thespianism possibly on the front when it comes to Ric Flair 
this was posted up to the front page of the site by our own Josh Nason this afternoon. It says the rap reported on Wednesday that Dwayne The Rock Johnson's Seven Bucks Productions. Hey, did you hear back in the day when he was struggling, he only had seven bucks in his pocket and he parlayed that into where he's at today? I don't know if you heard that story or not. He said it a lot. Anyway, he's developing a project uh, on the life of Ric Flair. Uh, it's Johnson, his ex-wife Danny Garcia, and Hiram Garcia. Well, they'll all produce it alongside Kevin Mischer of Mischler Films. The team previously teamed up on 2019's Fighting With My Family, which was a good movie, a film based on the life of uh, AEW Soraya, then Paige in WWE. Flair was not named as being directly involved, and as of this writing, he has yet to publicly comment on it. Johnson gave the following statement to the rap about the project, which had no timeline included. I'm not going to read all this. He just says he idolized Ric Flair and he, he can't wait to, to tell his unbelievable story and that he changed the game. And thank you for the house, Rick. While Flair has been the focus of several documentaries, hold on, Filthy, this will be the first time he uh, will be depicted in a feature film if that's what the project turns out to be. Grayson Waller actually portrayed Ric Flair on the now-canceled Young Rock TV show, which was awful, as was the guy that played Ric Flair in the Iron Claw. But, uh, uh, hey, did you ever hear that story about uh, The Rock only having seven bucks? Did you ever hear that one before, Tom? Yeah, I have heard that one. But what he fails to mention is that he also hit the genetic lottery by being the son of one of the most famous wrestling families of all time. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, like he was yeah. going to get opportunities. It was possible. You know, not everybody, you know, it's... I, you, 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 it was a free trip to Miami, right? Hey. University of Miami. You got a scholarship there. Not too bad. Not too bad. But yeah, uh, enough talks. Enough talk about the Rock. I want to talk about you and I, Mike. We should set up a time where we can go to the theater, kick our feet up, bring in some woo energy, maybe snack on some wings, <laughs> and watch this. Ric Flair biopic. You think Buddy Landell is going to get in there? The real nature boy of my generation? I hope so. Maybe some Scoot Andrews. I'd like to see a cameo in there. The black nature boy. Black nature boy. I like Scoot Andrews. Oh, well, you know, Buddy Rogers, obviously. You know, I have to have them crossing paths at some point. You know, he had a short feud with Flair in the Carolinas in the 70s. They battled over the 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 nature boy name and, and all that stuff but uh yeah you know him and that goofy woo energy drink you know if flair if they give him the microphone tonight you know people complained last m week about darby allen and that you know really rickety ass promo that he had you know against the young bucks I can imagine if you gave Ric Flair the mic tonight, all he would do would be praise The Rock and praise WWE. So if he's going to be on the show, Tony, do not give him the microphone or he will thank Rock profusely tonight about whatever this possible movie is going to be. But, you know, we just talked about in the first segment about Vince and all that stuff. The story of Ric Flair can easily be told because he's lived such a long and interesting life and he is so revered publicly by people that never really look past the surface. And if they have, much like a Mike Tyson, they kind of they turn their other their heads the other way when it comes to any allegations or anything about Ric Flair's personal life and, and, and any shortcomings he may have that way. Can you see this movie, again, it's being made by The Rock and everything. I mean, how much, if at all, do you think they get into any of that? Because, again, you probably only have an hour and a half, uh, hour and 45 minutes for a movie like this. I mean, what do you think this thing was, it would be about? Brother, you think they're going to have Ric Flair flashing his wiener on the airplane in Doing this the Rock movie? I, look, I, here's I the don't... thing. <laughs> 
He could look if you're telling the story about Ric Flair, '70s Lothario. I mean, I'm sure you could have. There's a possibility you could have him helicopter it around. I guess I don't. You might the Brazzers might have to come on board to produce the movie. But like, you know, look. You, I, you, you I don't want to look. Tell the good I don't want to look at that movie. I say you barely have time to tell the good things in this movie. I mean, I wonder how much of the bad they're really going to tell, and how again it, would this just just going to be a, a goofy movie? I mean, I don't know. I just can't see as time continues to move on. Do we really need a Ric Flair biopic? There, Is that it, something you're that interested in? I wouldn't mind seeing, you know, some replays of his early times training up in Minnesota. You know, or maybe the time surrounding the fatal plane crash that he was involved in and has come back from that. There's plenty of people like me who even, Mike, even in their advanced age of 40, missed out on the heyday of Ric Flair. His best times were before I can even remember. So while I've seen... 40 years of this guy wrestling i still missed out on the previous 20 which apparently was his best work so for someone like me i would much rather see this than the the page movie uh i don't know if we need to necessarily glorify a man who's been i guess oh he was almost canceled I guess in some ways, but he made his way back much like Mike Tyson did, as you mentioned. I don't know if we need to be glorifying, you know, people like that. But in the grand scheme of things, when you look at it in the vast world of professional wrestling, sadly, what he's done almost ends up on the low scale. I can't remember who said it, but somebody said, if you don't care about getting canceled, you can't get canceled. It's kind of like the case for Ric Flair. I mean, it was kind of the case for Dana White after what he did. You know, obviously, you know, Vince McMahon, you know, it, it's taken. Look, he, he didn't either, considering that he, you know, powered himself back to help, you know, negotiate that sale. He thought he was untouchable, too. And apparently, you know, there was a line for him. But, you know, with Ric Flair, he just seems to be unsinkable. And there are always going to be people that, again, Never going to end up looking past the surface when it comes to Flair and any of this stuff. But you do make a really good point because I'm trying to think of things that could be in the movie that would be interesting to both, you know, people who have been fans for years and know everything about him and people that you are trying to drag in. The people that like on the fringes of wrestling or, you know, who have no clue whatsoever, the type of people that would come in and saw the Von Erichs movie. And I think, I guess the plane crash would be one big thing, but I think even even bigger than that, we know he's adopted. We know he's born in Memphis, Tennessee, and he ends up, you know, being adopted by this doctor and his wife in Minnesota. And the only thing we know is, yeah, he goes to the University of Minnesota, but we don't people really don't know what his upbringing was like and what molded this kid to end up becoming the type of person that he was and and the type of personality that he is. You know, to me, that's probably the most interesting stuff, you know, that that you could probably put out there, you know, as far as a human interest thing to try to drag people in. Unfortunately, you also have the death of Reed Flair, which is a, tragic story in and of itself so there's plenty in the world of wrestling obviously there's plenty outside the world of wrestling as well when it comes to rick flair a larger than life personality a a larger than wrestling personality for sure AEW dynamites tonight we should probably bring that up the the bok center in tulsa oklahoma bank of oklahoma center AEW World Champion Samoa Joe, because unless they've added something here very recently, I think we're still at the same amount of stuff that we were talking about yesterday. Tom, I don't know if you had a chance to hear that show or not. Brian, a huge proponent on getting some things announced for these shows out there so the attendance will be a lot higher. I think we were talking about 2600 for this show in a 20,000 seat building there in Tulsa, but the card right now, well, Samoa Mike. Joe Swerves. Yeah. If I can interject real quick. Yes. One of the things that we've seen over the past year or two in the WWE is a big 
uptick in attendance, right? It's a hotter product. One Mm -hmm. thing we've also seen in that time period is kind of a movement to advertising matches Mm -hmm. and then actually delivering those matches, which is a stark contrast to what would happen previous to that. So it's not as if we don't have empirical evidence that points to that being a big help when it comes to selling tickets. And that's what we're trying to do here, right, Mike? We're trying to grab those listeners. We're trying to get them to pay attention and invest in us. And that's what we're going to do when we come back from the break. Observer Live, Mike Sempervivi here with you alongside Filthy Tom Lawler. Just fill in time on a Wednesday. I don't know if that's been obvious or not, but that's what we've been doing. AEW fills time every Wednesday night on TBS. And they are uh, at the, the Box Center, BOK Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And as it was going through the card here, Tom cut me off there at the end. So I will read it out to you now. It is the exact same thing as yesterday. Samoa Joe, Swerve Strickland, and Brian Cage against Hangman Page, Hook, and Rob Van Dam. There's got to be some sort of dynamic change that takes place with, like, Brian Cage and Toa Leona and 
uh, Khan, at some point, I mean, at some point, Nana's got to turn on Swerve or something. We have to have Swerve firmly in the babyface category and the rest of that crew on the heel side of things. I, I could be wrong about that, Filthy. I don't know. Do you think that that needs to be established more firmly because you got hangman page hanging out with hook and rvd tonight and you know people want to boo hangman page if he's in there with swerve do we need to get those guys situated and firmly in different camps here uh soon or am i just being too old school i think you could keep swerve and prince nana together the fans absolutely love doing the dance so I think that's Can you an do that to dance? together. No, absolutely not. Have you practiced nor, doing that dance? No, nor will I. Thank you. However, <laughs> I do think you should split off Brian Cage and the Gates of Agony, which are clearly a heel group, and maybe have them do the bidding for someone else. Maybe Hangman puts a bounty up. Maybe Brian Keith could try to take that bounty and fail. And then maybe Brian Cage and the Gates of Agony try to pick up that money. Who knows? But, yeah, I agree with you, Mike. Swerve, definitely on the babyface side. Everybody wants this guy to be their big hero despite being a home invader. Deplorable actions by Swerve. But the fans love him, so give them what they want. Exactly. And look, I, you know, it's, I like Hangman Page. He is not exactly king of the promo. You know, they've kind of even poked some fun at that. He's got this new persona. He's got this new look. He's got justification. He's got justification with all, look, now granted, he's never beaten Swerve. But that actually is some justification on why he hates this guy. But he should be upset with the fans for turning on him. The guy busted into his house and cut a promo over his baby's crib and left him some merch. Like, you know, the fact that the fans are cheering Swerve right now, Hangman should be pissed off about. And he needs to use that energy and fuel and direct it into his promos because he's kind of got the look now. But, like, you know, are you just going to be a Virginia Silas young with, with the look here and try to be badass, or are you actually going to be able to pull off, you know, Hangman Adam Page, bad guy? Which, you know, it's like Roxanne Perez. You know, they, they're flipping her on NXT. They want her to have an edge. They want her to be crazy. And we see, her, you know, she's going about it in that NXT way as it happens. I'd like to see that happen more with Hangman Page. I don't know. We'll see. I wasn't sure if you were going to jump in there. No, I've said my piece. Fair enough. That. John Moxley and Claudio against FTR. Uh, hard to, for me to believe that that won't be awesome, or at least, you know, really good. It's got to be. I don't think you can put all those elements into one match and have it not come out very good. No, and you know what? <laughs> just, just in this, I'm not making fun of FTR's height or anything like that. But a lot of times, people, and because it's come up on the show where people, you know, Brian will say like people forget that John Moxley, it's like he's not a small guy. And you saw them like those two guys facing off, and Claudio's obviously a big dude too. When they had their face off last week and they were going at it, it's like it is. You know, you do remember how big John Moxley is when he's throwing blows with Dax there. But you know that match is is probably as you mentioned going to be awesome here women's world champion tony storm is in action as is diana perrazzo that's all we know right now we have no idea who their opponents are going to be it could it be possible since we've given her a victory now that they trot out queen amanada to get beaten again by one of those two women Actually, my guess is that Queen Amanada goes pretty far in this roh women's tv title i would hope tournament. so i would hope she wins it I don't know what we're going to get. Tony Storm said that it's going to be a showcase of her grappling expertise to show Diana Parato what she can do. So I'm not quite sure what we're going to get. Tony Storm, her character obviously has made her career over the past six months. And I know that she did some work on the upcoming Mildred Burke film, Queen she of did. the Ring. Yeah, which will be coming out, I believe, I believe this year. So we'll see. Maybe she picked up some uh, tricks 
from that movie, and we're going to see him tonight in the ring. I mean, do you, did you know who else went out for that part, or at least actually who had that part before Tony Storm did and then had to pull out? No, 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 no. You've got the story wrong, my friend. Oh, really? Oh, the, yes. the Charlotte Flair story. Yeah, Charlotte Flair was replaced in the movie, but not by Tony Storm. Oh. It was by Camille. Oh. Oh, God. That, ooh. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that had to be a little bit awkward. <laughs> not for me. <laughs> well, you know, there was... I guess, you know, for those who do not know, uh, Charlotte had a quite the tumultuous relationship with Bram, I believe his name was at the time. Uh, I forget his name right now. Thomas uh, Latimer. Thomas Latimer, thank you very much, who's wrestled in, in the NWA and, and been around for for quite some time there, had a WWE <laughs> developmental deal at Resigned one point. with TNA for a record amount of times. Yes, he did. He did. That he gets right. He had that that deal going on for a while when that kept being reported. But he had a a rough relationship with Charlotte Flair, where there was uh, accusations and, and police being called uh, with with some fighting and all that stuff going on. And there was talk about Camille possibly getting a look by WWE and coming on board there. But then again, that ended up not happening. And it probably was the best case scenario considering I'm sure there would be an issue uh, possibly maybe still uh, between those groups. So that didn't happen. And that's got nothing to do with AEW Dynamite tonight, which will happen at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Oh, Rick uh, Flair may time... bring it up on air <laughs> if they give him a mic. That's if possible but didn't he get into a fight you know what now we're getting too deep into things uh with all of that so we'll just we'll just back out slowly from all of that sort of stuff maybe that'll be in the seven bucks productions movie we'll get to see what happened with any uh the, you know father's day wishes from bram and and rick flair back in the day <laughs> I could have sworn, and it's been made official, I guess. I could have sworn this was made official months ago. Apparently, it was not. We've just been talking about it, and the shows have just been airing on the app anyway. But Billy Corgan has announced today that his National Wrestling Alliance will be available for streaming on the CW app, and there will be a reality show that follows him around in both his public and private life. He hopes NWA's deal with the CW app helps his promotion, quote, show that there are other voices in professional wrestling, end quote. Oh, there's going to be more quotes here in a moment, and you'll love it. NWA programming has been available on the streaming service since February 6th, but an official announcement regarding the deal was made today. The NWA and CW also revealed on Wednesday that a reality show starring Corrigan will debut on the app later this year. The unscripted show will focus on Corrigan's life, family, role as NWA president, and his day job. New episodes of NWA Power are released every Tuesday on the app. They've already been playing. Past seasons of the show are available as well. This, Tom, came from the press release, okay? Quote, Democratizing access to action-packed wrestling from some of the sport's biggest, boldest, and brightest personalities all programming is notably available free of charge and without a subscription via the CW app. It represents a monumental power move for the NWA. The partnership not only amplifies the brand's presence throughout popular culture and the zeitgeist, but also sets a precedent for wrestling at large. Democratizing access and a zeitgeist. What do you think about that, Filthy? I think they're trying to get their SRO up, or what is it, SEO, search engine optimization, Something like up that. through the <laughs> roof with those terms. I don't know if they have any SROs when, when it comes to uh, NWA events uh, recently here, uh, but uh, I so I look again. These shows have already been airing uh, up on the CW app, and I guess it has been. Now we we know it's been made official here. The and and look, any I don't know how much this is going to help them, you know, but maybe 
they can end up with a spot because they're gonna have time to fill on the weekends and again i don't know how it's going to work with like nascar but they are they're picking up whatever it's called now whatever the bush series races are the xfinity series whatever the series right under the main nascar series is called now you're gonna have stuff that gets rained out right or you're gonna have rain delays this seems like something that if everything goes right and the sinister minister is not snorting coke anymore <laughs> you know like if if they can keep literally their noses clean like maybe the show can end up on cw proper you know nowhere it maybe it doesn't get promoted that much because wwe's nxt is going to be on there but maybe this can actually end up being a good thing for them in the long run i mean it's possible right maybe it it's possible, I would think, if I were a CW executive, I'd probably look towards, you know, some sort of fringe NXT programming if I was going to throw it into that slot just based on prestige of the companies, you know. Maybe the NXT Combine, you throw in a few action-packed spurts from that. Maybe something, a few matches from Speed. Maybe they could work out a deal there. Oh, you can't do that. That's exclusive. That is that is X only, the, your, your speedy matches. Oh, I apologize then. <clears throat> but, it, you know, I mean, it can't hurt. That's the biggest thing when it comes to the NWA getting access to the CW app. I'm good. I think I'm good with watching Billy Corgan's private life. But, you know, <laughs> maybe a show about his public persona would be a little bit more appetizing. Were you ever a Smashing Pumpkins fan back in the nineties? Was the was the world of vampire for you? I recognize his skills as a musician. I don't really know what he's doing out there, but I respect it. I think the only times I've seen him, uh Lollapalooza. Uh he there at that one where pavement opened up and uh, we went to the one in West Virginia, and somebody threw a big mud pie and knocked pavement off stage, which I'm sure Barry Corrigan must have been thrilled about. Uh, but there was that one, and then actually saw Garbage and Smashing Pumpkins right before, who was it, the keyboardist or the bassist OD'd or whatever back in, this was like 90, 98, 97, whatever it was. Uh, but, man, Garbage was awesome. Shirley Manson was tremendous. That, damn it, was a good group. That was a good show could have left after garbage you know no offense billy this one i was not a big smashing pumpkins fan that's why we don't use it as bumper music we got midnight rider and hearing midnight rider means we got to take a ride to break wrestling observer live oh it was so cool it was it was terrifying more than anything um i almost wish i fell off right at the end and I almost wish I'd have fallen off earlier on because at least it would have been done and it would have been out of my system. But the fear of falling off of that thing is so much worse than actually falling off of it. Um, but it was it was so cool. Like the amount of things you can do in a match like that, if you think of all the things you can do in a match and then you add six other people and then you add this huge structure that you can all hang off of, you know, like there's just so many ways to get around it and Obviously, I was sharing it with some incredible women, too. Um, lots of women that I'd never even wrestled before. So that was a whole thing in itself. Um, but, yeah, it was crazy. It was it was a great time. But I reckon I, I'd like to do another one, but maybe not loads of them. <laughs> yeah, it is cool. I guess that match was such a, especially it being the first TNA pay-per-view um, in a long time. It, there was a lot of eyes on that show. And obviously, we were the first ma the first match on the show. So it did really kind of throw me into the deep end a little bit of so many people that might not have even been watching um, TNA at the time had tuned in because this was the first pay-per-view back. And then I'm one of the first people they see and they might not have even ever heard of me. So it was a really nice way, I think, and a really good showcase for me to kind of show what I'm all about in like a really exciting way, as opposed to just being, you know, brought on on TV, which would have been great, but it was so exciting to do it, you know, in Vegas on live pay-per-view. Like there was so many, cool things about it yeah it's great i think it's really kind of exactly what i needed at this point in my career obviously like you said i was in nxt UK a bit um but i was even younger when i was there i was about 19 when i signed so it's a lot to handle at a very young age um and then i had a year or two out just doing the independence 
like throughout the UK and then coming over to Canada and we started doing stuff with Impact at the time. Um, it really helped kind of, I think, level me up as much as obviously I'd been in WWE and that was really cool. I don't think I was necessarily ready for that sort of stage at my age and my experience level, you know, but it gave me so many tools that I think now I can bring to somewhere like TNA where I'm a bit more grown up, a bit more experienced and a lot more prepared for it. Um, so I really think it's like the perfect place for me to be right now um, to kind of show the rest of the world what say here in the UK, everybody else already knows. Um, so it's nice to be able to share it and get a bit more kind of like uh, international notoriety, I suppose. It was crazy. Like obviously we done a little bit with them with subculture. Um, so it wasn't out of nowhere, but it was very much like, okay, like they understand what I'm trying to put out into the world. And I think that's the biggest thing I've got from it is that there's a lot of trust in someone giving you a job like that. You know, it's them going, we know that you know what you're doing and we want to help you get there. Back on the show, <laughs> Mike Simber, Vivi, Filthy Tom Lawler here with you. Filthy, let me, I just got to ask you, where do you come down on uh, gas station performance enhancing uh, supplements? I don't come down on them. I'm up. You can go for the hours. The whole time. Hours. Yeah. Hours. It just, it's. Uh, I can it's, go for it, hours, it, but what I can't do is watch NXT for hours. You can't. Luckily, luckily, I do it in one hour. That's you through Can we Hulu. get through it in one minute? Well, you, we absolutely can. Because like, I'll ask you, is there anything that stood out to you last night besides the immaculate acting of Lyra Valkyria and Tatum Paxley? You know what? I was very impressed by the fact that Lash Legend and Lyra Valkyria went out there and had what I believe was essentially a call-it-on-the-fly shoot contest. And especially for someone of Lash Legend's experience, Brian said it a few weeks ago, and I've got to agree with him after this. She has really turned the corner and improved. And there was a time where he thought she wasn't going to get it. I wasn't impressed, but Lash Legend has won me over. She is absolutely, again, yeah. coming along very, very well. Valkyria ultimately hit a flying body press to win the match. We saw where, unfortunately, Shotzi, who announced on her social media she's going to be out, I think, around nine months out with a torn ACL. She was delivering a DDT through the ropes to the apron where she jumped down to the floor as she did that. Her left knee gave out, so tough situation there. Lash Legend had the match with Kalani Jordan right before that, which meant she was still in her gear when Roxanne Perez found out about this as the match was going on. Boy, was she pissed off. And this is all leading to her still going after the women's title. Tony D'Angelo, sounds like, will be going after the main title as 2024 rolls on as well. Filthy, a professional job you did, sir. Thank you, as did you, Mike. And let's close it off with one more professional move. Take us home. We'll talk to you again after a while.